Hi, everybody. Welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. My name is Jared. Uh, I have something pretty exciting to share, I think, in my opinion. So um, if you're if you're new to the channel, I have all these different trackers that I do. I track quotes. I track uh, important events. Well, one of these trackers is called the Rising Generation Tracker. And you can access my trackers. It's just one link. It's in the description box of every video. Just click on that. It'll take you here. You can't change anything, but you can view it. And um, I've compiled this list of quotes from prophets, apostles, general authorities that have to do with certain generations being the generation of uh, like the generation that will see Christ when he comes, the generation that will be the leaders of the church when Christ comes, just a whole bunch. OK, so I've already done a couple of videos on that, and there was one that I was aware of that I had not yet put on here because I, I had a hard time kind of like understanding it. So it kind of merits its own video. And this is that video. And this one might be the most important quote out of all of these uh, in my way of thinking. So I'll show you what I mean. It comes from Joseph Smith himself. He made a generational quote. So this is in the year 1843. It's April 6th. And this is what he says. Were I going to prophesy, I would say the end of the world would not come in 1844 five or six or in 40 years there are those of the rising generation who shall not taste death till christ comes whoa okay now this is actually quoted in bruce r mcconkey's the millennial messiah here i have it here i'm on archive.org where you can borrow these books for free it's an online library uh, they have a ton of stuff and this is what Bruce R. McConkie says. He says, It was in this same sermon that he said, and I'll read it again, Were I going to prophesy, I would say, I would say the end of the world would not come in 1844, 5 or 6, or in 40 years. There are those of the rising generation who shall not taste death till Christ comes. End quote. And then Bruce R. McConkie continues, The rising generation includes all those yet to be born to parents then living manifestly many of these are now among us and will be living after the year AD 2000 has come and gone okay so i i don't know exactly where he gets that definition but uh, maybe it just kind of makes sense to him maybe maybe you know he was inspired to write this i don't know but he's saying that, no, not just the people being born at that time, but the children of those parents that are being that are alive at that time. So and he calculated that many of those would be living beyond the year 2000. Now, we are in the year 2023 now, right? It's January. It's still a new year. And every year that goes by, time is running out for this group. Now, what does it look like? Well, I'll show you. This is what I came up with. So I made some new columns right here to the right of the quote. And then uh, the reference for all my quotes uh, now is in column N. So you can check that out. So let's just say you have someone that was an infant at the time that Joseph Smith said this. Okay, so zero years old he doesn't become he or she doesn't become one year old until the next year in 1844 let's pretend that this is um a boy though the reason why is because men um can father children typically older than women can right women only have so long uh of like childbearing years but men can just you know forever Although the older a man gets, uh, the children tend to have uh, less. Uh, it has to do with the, um, oh, what's it called? On the DNA strands, like at the end. I can't remember what it's called, but like it basically gets shorter. Whatever. So basically genetic information is lost as a man gets older. So, But anyway, 
So let's, let's just pretend that this is a guy. So let's go up. Let's move forward in time. And let's say that he has a child at the age of 40. Okay. He's 40 years old. Maybe he's married to um, a 30-year-old. Maybe he's married to a 35-year-old. Whatever. Who knows? And so a child is born in the year uh, 1883. Okay. So in 1884, that is the child's one year birthday. Okay, they're one years old. <clears> or <throat> first birthday, I guess I should say. So now let's look at the child. So we're going up, going up, going up, going up. Uh, you'll notice was it back here? No, I guess I didn't I haven't come across it yet. So here's the child in like this light red color. Okay. Um, oh, sorry. Let's go back. Let's just do the same thing with this child. So this child, let's say it's also a boy. Uh, he has a child. Okay. This is now the grandchild of the original parent at the age of 40. Okay. In green. Now look at President Nelson. President Nelson is in yellow. Uh, President Nelson would be just one year younger than this hypothetical grandchild that we're talking about. So essentially, it's the same generation, just because it's off by a year. So let's move forward, move forward. And, and I guess you kind of already know how this ends, because President Nelson is still with us. Uh, and just as an explanation, when you get here to the year 1973, there's this gap right here, because I have two quotes from the year 1973. So I don't want to double count a year. So if you come on the tracker uh, yourself, just take note of that. That's why there's a gap. Um, so you continue on. And that brings us to today. Okay. President Nelson will turn 100 in the year 2025. Right now he is 98. Okay. He turned 98 September of last year. Now, with what Bruce R. McConkie said, I, I don't know if he was also referring to grandchildren, and I don't know why he said that um, that would include those yet to be born to parents then living, because if, the, if that's talking about the first generation, uh, the generation of the child of the parent, they would have passed away uh, roughly like in the 80s, okay, in the 80s. Uh, because this hypothet this example right here, this hypothetical child, uh, would have died in 1983 um, at the age of 100. Okay, best case scenario, I guess. Um, so, now, you can play around with these numbers, of course, because, again, a man can have children, you know, probably into 40s, 50s, um, maybe even 60s. I, I know sometimes things like that happen, so... And you may feel like this is too much of a stretch, and I don't know, maybe it is. But um, I don't know, like I said, I don't know how Bruce R. McConkie gets like this next generation, the, the generation of the child here in red, beyond the year 2000. Uh, because, let's go back up to the top. <clears throat> because that means that, let's see. 1983 so basically 15 plus well more than 15 okay <laughs> okay what is it 2000 1983 okay so well 17 of course it's 17 um so the parent could have been 47 i guess no no i mean 57 at the time that they had this child. And that would get the child to the year 2000. So you can kind of play around with that. But I think it's interesting, nevertheless, that the grandchild generation in this example matches up really closely with President Nelson. I'm going to say, just the way that I view it, that President Nelson is that generation uh, like the oldest generation that would see Christ, the the ones that um, you know, live into their upper nineties and in hundreds. 
And uh, what's interesting about that, what's interesting about that is, again, on the Second Coming timeline, uh, here in green, <clears throat> you have all these world leaders that are dying in their um, 80s, but also high 90s, like Pope Benedict. He died on New Year's Eve at the age of 95. He, he's not going to be around to see it. Um you have Pele, the soccer king. I I put him on here if you don't watch that video, just because he's a cultural icon. He's not an actual king, obviously, but uh, he meant a lot to a lot of people, to fans of soccer. It's like all these people that symbolize nations, pastimes, sports, music, so on and so forth. A lot of them are dying right now. Like the ones that are have the, the title of king or queen or princess or whatever. You know, uh, Jing, uh, Jing Zemin, the longest living president of China and the leader of the Com Chinese Communist Party, he died at 96, right? Um, Queen Elizabeth, she died at 96 as well. Mikhail Gorbachev, uh, the longest living leader of the Soviet Union, 91. So you see what I mean? It's almost like it's like really intentional. Uh, on the side of the Lord, like these symbols of their respective nations, churches, um, entertainment, sports, they're not being permitted to live to see the second coming, right? Um, not in, This isn't necessarily a, a statement on their worthiness or anything like that, but um, but more from the perspective of Daniel, how... You have two things in the book of Daniel. You have King Nebuchadnezzar's dream where you have the statue that gets destroyed, um, which represents the worldly powers. The, the Basically, the timeline of worldly powers from the time of Babylon down to right now. The modern nation states of um, that descend through, find their, their roots back in the Roman Empire, right? And then you have... Uh, the vision that Daniel saw, which corresponds to the statue with the four beasts, right? And then the ten horns, which represents the modern um, kingdoms and nations that come from the Roman Empire. So, anyway, I, I think the symbolism here is that the old way of doing things, the old world order, is coming to an end. Um as President Nelson and those that are similar in age to him in the church are trucking forward to basically fulfill Joseph Smith's prophecy. And the stunning thing about that is I think that's an indication of where we're at. That, no, really, we can't, it can't be more than a few more years. I mean, it can, like, the Lord can do anything. Who knows? Maybe President Nelson will live to be 120 <laughs> or something like that. Um, but I don't know. I feel like more realistically, he's getting really close to the end. Now, I don't know. Maybe he'll pass away. Maybe President Oaks will be the one. So, but this is just something to consider. Um, I feel like it's pretty, I feel like it's pretty stunning when you look at it. Um, just as a reminder, let's go back to the prophet tracker. <sighs> President Nelson, compared to all of his predecessors, all the other presidents of the church, has talked about the second coming way more. Way, way more. Look at the totals column right here, column I. You see how, like, the early church, you know, the first prophets, the first presidents of the church, they, they talked about it a lot. But then um, the last one really to talk about it a lot was... Wilford Woodruff, and then you go with all these years, just, you know, it kind of drops off, really, and then it just picks up and gets into the dark red with President Nelson. These are for terms like he returns, hastening, millennium, comes again, hasten, last days, and second coming. And it's even more dramatic when you just look at the term second coming. No one even comes close to President Nelson. Again, if you're new on the channel, this is simply a tally of, of general conference talks um, where 
these speakers include these words and phrases. And it includes uh, any talks from before they were president of the church, but that still kind of shows you very most likely President Nelson's mission because before he came became president of the church, he had said second coming in 11 different talks. That still beats everybody except for Wilford Woodruff. It beats everybody. That's before he became pre president of the church. And then when you look at um, the other apostles by seniority, starting with Down A. Jokes and then moving on up to Elder Suarez, they don't come close either. The only one that really comes close, um, I guess you could you could say maybe M. Russell Ballard, President M. Russell Ballard of the, the President of the Quorum of the Twelve, and then President Henry B. Eyring, if you're looking at like the totals. Um, so, I mean, I just, I don't know. I feel like there's so much that points to, to President Nelson. That's why I think that the whole 17, 18 thing is not just coincidence. It's not just arbitrary. Uh, it seems like it means something. It really does. And it seems like it's, it's intentional. I don't know how in the world all those 17s could be associated with the April 2022 General Conference. And then the next one, it's 18s. It goes from 17 to 18. And that's just coincidence. I don't think so. I don't think so. So my best guess, and I'm not going to be heartbroken if this turns out to be wrong, but my best guess, what I really feel, is that President Nelson will become, will be the president of the second coming. And that, like I've said before, that he'll probably be, um, let's see, not, not an example or maybe kind of an example, <clears throat> like, because he would be among the first to transition from mortality to resurrection without dying. You know, the, the term twinkling, because everyone's going to be translated as we move into the millennium. There's not going to be any more death. And once you reach uh, 100 years old, according to what we've researched, uh, that's when you um, change in the twinkling of an eye. You don't die. You just move right into resurrection. It would be perfect. It'd, it would be so perfect with President Nelson if that happened. And yeah, it could it could happen with any one of them, but just like with how old he is, okay, because he's broken records uh, for the oldest apostle of all time in the oldest president of the church. No, not sorry, not of all time of this dispensation. Out of all of them, out of all apostles, out of all presidents of the church, he is the oldest, and I feel like that by itself is like a it's a indicator of who he is. Okay. So those are just my thoughts. You know, think what you want. The only thing that we can do really is just wait and see what actually happens. But I feel like, uh, there's a pretty good case to be made for, um, president Nelson being that prophet. Now to finish this off, there is one other thing I wanted to share with you. Uh, this this was by President Nelson. Um, I've tried to find this person, Mitch. Okay, Mitch is the one that pointed this out to me, and I, I can't remember if it was in a comment on the channel. I don't know if it was an email, because whenever I, I point something out that somebody else pointed out to me, I give them credit, and then I send them like an email or comment on their comment to let them know I'm putting out the video. So Mitch, if you're out there, I'm sorry I wasn't able to reach you, but now I'm bringing this up in a video. But I mean, Mitch is like like a ghost. Like I could have sworn that it was in an email. I did a search. I didn't, you know, uh, there's actually not a whole lot of emails that I just like delete. So I don't know. Maybe Mitch is one of the three Nephites. It sent me an email. I don't know, but it just like mysteriously can't be found. But okay, 
Um, so this is on YouTube. This is on KSL News' um, YouTube channel. It's right here, so you can watch it. I'll put this in the description below. At the at the pretty much the very end of this video, this is like one of the things that they put in between general conference sessions. So it's like one of those things. This came out on April first, twenty eighteen. So this would be this would be at the very beginning of President Nelson's presidency. Became because he became prophet and president of the church January of that year. So just a few months before. But at the very end. Um, at about the, if you start watching probably, probably at about the 43 minute and just say 40 seconds. So 43 minutes, 40 seconds. I'll put that in the description. Um, that's where this quote is. It's not written down anywhere. It's just in this video. And this is what he says. He says, I think the young people of the church are the finest that have ever been on planet Earth. They've come with that special equipment that God has reserved for the winding up scene prior to his second coming. Uh, this is a unique quote, you know. Um, I've noticed. I've noticed that he, he. This is now at least the second time that he's referred to planet earth you remember when he did the gratitude like the give thanks hashtag give thanks uh thing uh, when was it i guess it was november of 2020 on youtube it was that 11 minute long video he he said a prayer in it and he he made this peculiar statement uh, where he referred to all of us as passengers on planet earth and then here's just another quote where he's saying planet earth so it's just it's interesting uh anyway maybe that's just you know just him and his personality but uh the other interesting thing about it is this idea of special equipment i'm going to go ahead and assume that what he's referring to there is that's obviously a metaphor for i mean no one was born with <laughs> with like special scriptures <laughs> or or whatever uh, I'm assuming that this is referring to specially prepared spirits uh, from the pre-existence that were trained probably for special specific missions here right now. Um, you can let me know what you think of that, but they've come with that special equipment that God has reserved for the wind up scene prior to his second coming. It makes, it makes me think, and I'm not trying to be, prideful i think it would include all of us listening to this frankly um especially those that are right now the the youth especially them but i think all of us uh it's like it's kind of like special forces you know like <laughs> special forces um they have access to more things they they basically just they get whatever they need to accomplish their missions whereas if you're just like in a regular line unit it's like well this is what's assigned to you deal with it but um when you have a special operation going on uh you just you, you do whatever needs to be done to make it work is my understanding when it comes to any uh special special operations unit within the United States military and uh, I think that's probably what's going on here. It's uh, a very unconventional time spiritually when you compare what's happening right now in the world, this strong delusion that is just has everybody essentially blind, you know, and under the influence of Satan and his um, his agenda, essentially. It takes, I, yeah, it takes special people that have been specially trained, that are strong, that were valiant uh, before this world to uh, be able to withstand, to hold their ground and then help bring others with them um, forward, you know, uh, and, and not falling to those, those tricks and those lies and agendas. So I really like this quote. I hope you do, too. But I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Uh, what do you think about this? What do you think about President Nelson? And what do you think about 
this quote. Uh, originally, I don't know if I pointed this out. Uh, this is recorded, what Joseph Smith said, it's originally recorded in uh, Scriptural Teachings of the Prophet Joseph Smith. Okay, that was compiled by Joseph Fielding Smith. Um, and then Bruce R. McConkie in Millennial Messiah uh, shared it again in his book. So I'd like to hear your thoughts on that. Okay, well, that's going to be it for this one. So if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, like this video. If you liked it, leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Also, make sure to share it. And I'll talk to you guys later.